What's up everybody? We're back with another video in my iOS interview question series. And today we're gonna to be talking about concurrency and threading. Now this is a huge topic that I could do hours and hours of videos on. However, we're gonna keep this video at a high level because the entire point of this video is for you to be able to answer an interview question. Now during an interview, they're asking you a lot of questions. So they're not gonna expect you to be an expert and deep dive into this topic. They're just gonna to wanna to know that you have a very basic general understanding of what's actually going on with concurrency and threading. And with that being said, we're gonna talk about the different thread types, the main thread, the background thread. We're gonna talk about queues a little bit, uh, serial queues, concurrent queues. And then we're also gonna talk about how Grand Central Dispatch kind of ties it all together and you can move things around from different threads and queues. All right, let's dive in. So let's start with the big picture and what is concurrency? Basically concurrency is doing multiple tasks at the same time. Now what allows us to do this is Apple's multi-core processors. Here I have pictured just an example of the latest A10 processor, which is a quad core processor uh, in the iPhone 7. So the more cores you have, the more tasks you can do at the same time. Now all these tasks are being executed on what are called threads. Imagine threads is kind of like this major highway. Each lane in the highway is a thread, in each car in that lane is a task being executed on that thread. Now you notice here pictured, I have a, a lane here on the left, the express lane, that's real clean and speedy. And that is called our main thread. And the reason we wanna keep our main thread, you know, speedy and clean is because that is what our UI is done on. So for example, if you clog up this main thread with a very, you know, time intensive task, your UI is gonna freeze and your user is gonna think your app is locked up. So that's why we do all those time heavy tasks on the background threads, keep the main thread clear so the UI is still responsive. Now all this management of the main thread and all the background threads you can have, cause you can have you know, a, a lot of background threads can get really hard and tricky. Uh, however, luckily Apple has built something for us called Grand Central Dispatch and NS Operation Queues, which is basically just an API built on top of this threading to make our lives as developers easier. And essentially it just handles all the heavy lifting of creating and managing threads for us. As developers, we just work with a queue of tasks, give that to Grand Central Dispatch, and it just handles all the thread management stuff for us. It's pretty nice. So by now you're probably asking, what's a queue? Imagine a queue like people lining up for Star Wars. And I'm, I don't know what kind of crazy people do this. Certainly not me. Definitely, definitely not me. I, I lined up for Star Wars and I loved every second of it. But anyway, it's a line. So the first person in the line is the first person to go into the movie theater. It's called first in, first out. And that's really all a queue is. Uh, you just line up tasks, and then the task that went in first is the first one to get executed. The second one is the second one to get executed. Let's take a look. So here you see all our tasks come in. Task one is the first one to go. It gets executed first. Then task two will get executed, then three, and so on, and so on. There's your basic queue. Now, there's two types of queues. We have a serial queue and a concurrent queue. We're gonna talk about the differences there. We kind of just saw the serial queue, so we'll run through it again real quick, but the serial queue, the tasks come in in order, and then task two doesn't start until task one is 100% complete. Task three doesn't start until task two is 100% complete. So everything happens one at a time in order. Now let's take a look at a concurrent queue. So in a concurrent queue, everything still starts in the same order. So the tasks are gonna start one, two, three, four. However, task two does not have to wait for task one to complete to start. So therefore things will happen quicker, but as you can see, it's gonna be unpredictable on how things finish. So you can see things start in order, one, two, three, four. However, certain tasks are quicker than other tasks. Let's take a look at that one more time. Now, imagine task two being something like downloading a high res image, whereas task four is you know, just downloading some text. So task two certainly starts first. However, task four happens much quicker. So yes, concurrent stuff, you're doing stuff at the same time, so it ends quicker. However, the order of completion is very unpredictable. So this leads us into the pros and cons of each. When should you use a serial queue? When should you use a concurrent queue? Uh, let's talk about the serial queue first. So in a serial queue, it's a predictable execution order. So everything happens in order, one, two, three, four. Two doesn't even start until one is done. So this prevents race conditions, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, it's very predictable. Let's take a look. So again, the tasks come in, task one gets completed, task two gets completed, task three, task four, etc. Everything's in order, one at a time, pretty clean. However, as you can imagine, this is slower because everything is happening one at a time. Task two doesn't even start until task one is complete. So concurrent queues are faster because yes, they still start in order, but everything is kind of happening concurrently or at the same time. However, this results in an unpredictable order in what uh, I mentioned earlier in race conditions. So we're gonna look at our example again here in a second, but I want you to imagine something first. 
Imagine task 3 and task 4 are related and your code has some conditional logic that is relying on task 3 to be complete before task 4. However, you put it on a concurrent queue, so you can't guarantee the order of completion. Now sometimes task 3 will be done before task 4. You can't really predict that. It all depends on how the system is managing the threads and the resources. And again, that's why it's called a race condition because you can never be certain which task is going to finish before the other task. Uh, and again, that's why it has an unpredictable order. Again, remember, the concurrent queue is a much faster way to execute a group of tasks. However, you just have to not care about the order they get executed in. So for example, let's say you're saving a bunch of user preferences. You don't care what order they get saved in. You just want it to be saved as quick as possible. So that's when you would use a concurrent queue. And vice versa, when the order of execution is absolutely imperative, then you would want to use a serial queue. Now by default, every app gets one serial queue, which is the main queue, and then four concurrent queues, which are your background queues of various priorities. Now you can create your own custom queues, uh, but for the most part, this main queue that you get and the four uh, concurrent queues in the background, that's usually more than enough for what you need. Um, if you want to create your own custom ones, that's probably more a little more advanced, uh, but just know that you can do that. So how do we switch back and forth between these queues? Now, you've probably seen this little bit of code before, this ditch batch queue.main.async, and then you do some code in there. A very common case when you would use this is what I have shown. Now, let's say you downloaded uh, some JSON data from the internet, you're populating a table view. Once all that stuff is done downloading, you wanna reload your table view to show your data. Well, all that downloading stuff is happening on a background thread. Now you wanna shift to a main thread to update your UI. Remember, the main thread is kinda like the UI thread. So here what this code is doing, uh, it is dispatching off the background thread to the main thread, and then here we are reloading our table view data. This is a very common little chunk of code, and uh, updating your UI on the main thread is something you'll do all the time as a developer. So you'll see this a lot. Now you can move stuff to a background queue manually uh, here using dispatch queue.global and the QoS stands for quality of service. And in this case, we want it to be on a background. Um, and then you just run whatever code you want to run in this block. Now, to be honest with you, I have almost never used this code to manually send something to a background queue. I'm not saying you're never going to use it, but the previous example of moving something to the main queue in the main thread is much more common uh, than manually sending something to the background thread. But I did just want to show you this so you know it is possible. But again, far and away, the most common way you're gonna use Grand Central Dispatch is moving stuff from a background queue to the main queue using this dispatch queue.main.async uh, and then doing something like reloading your table view. Again, you're gonna use this all the time. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully you have a pretty good understanding about what concurrency and threading is and what's going on. And then now you can crush that interview question. If you don't, leave a comment, leave a question. I'll jump in there and help out. All right, if you found this at all useful, go in and subscribe. I put out new videos all the time.